So we've all heard of the Great Depression, and back in the last housing crisis, we had the Great Recession, but now people are talking about the Great Deceleration, if you can believe that. Welcome to Housing Bubble 2.0 News of the Week, or as I like to call it, another episode of As the Housing Market Turns. Randy Patrick here. It's the 31st of May. Hope you're doing well. Um, we got lots to talk about. I'm putting the realism back in real estate like I always do. Yeah, I took a little bit of time off uh, from some videos. It's been a little while, but you know what? Deals before videos. That's how it has to work. So closed a couple of deals, got stuff on the go, expanding the business. That's what we have to do because the time is now to get your hands on these properties before people you know, figure out what they can do and start jumping in the market as well too. That's the whole point of all this. So uh, this video today is brought to you by our friends at foreclosure.com. I'm an affiliate of foreclosure.com, so if you want to find out the distressed properties that are going on in your backyard, your neighborhood, go to gethousingdata.com gethousingdata.com. That'll take you to my page for foreclosure.com and you can check out, you can join. There's a seven-day free trial. It's a very good and inexpensive way to, to hang out on the site that has the most distressed property listings across the U.S. So there you go. So lots on the go, guys. Uh, and you know what? Guess what today is? Today just happens to be the last Tuesday of the month since it is May 31st. So guess what? We, we're going to talk about a little bit to tee things off. That's Case Schiller. So Case Schiller, U.S. home price um, indices. So again, this is a mouthful. S&P, Standard & Poor, CoreLogic, Case Schiller, uh, annual home price index comes out, as I said, every day, last Tuesday of the month. So here we go. They're talking about March data. And please realize that the way the Case Schiller data is calculated and reviewed, it's not last month. So it's not, we're, we're not talking April, we're talking March. All right, so it's about a two-month drag here. So the big news, of, I guess you could say, is that, yeah, home price gain on the average was 20.6%. So the year-over-year -year gain across the board was 20.6%, which is pretty substantial if you think about that. Unheard of. But the bigger news is the fact that uh, the three top markets, Tampa, Phoenix, and Miami, were the highest year-over-year -year in gains. And guess what? Well, you can see that uh, Tampa actually overtook Phoenix, uh, you know, as, as the top location on the top 20 index, as the most year-over-year -year gain. So the, for the first time in nearly three years, the city with the most rapid growth in housing prices was not Phoenix. In March, Tampa led all cities with a gain of 34.8%, uh, followed with Phoenix at 32.4% and Miami at 32%. So you got two Florida cities who are posting 30% year-over-year annual gains which is unheard of, and mortgages are becoming more expensive as the Federal Reserve has begun to ratchet up interest rates, suggesting that the macroeconomic environment may not support extraordinary home price growth for much longer. Now realize that these houses that were closed in the month of March represented contracts that would have been signed in February or January or even earlier. So realize that so, uh, we're still seeing a month here where we see significant growth but as price point, but I don't think all the interest rate increases um, sort of were probably affecting this at this point in time. So let's make sure we take this with a grain of salt. I'm trying to remember when interest rates started going up really high. I know it wasn't until the fives until early May, mid-April maybe, if I recall correctly. So stuff that was closed in March could have represented rate locks and stuff that had a you know lower more moderate interest rate as for your, as far as your mortgage goes. So that's the scoop on that. But again, Tampa, where I live, is is uh, has I guess you could say taken over top spot. So of course, here's the core the core logic uh, indices. The, the nice graph here. So clearly, the middle bump is the first housing bubble in 2006. The three lines each represent the national 20 and 10 city indices. So you can see 2006, we had the bump. And you can see on the right part of the graph, the top right of the graph, we're at the high end here. Looks like everything has grown over the past year or two on pretty much an exponential level. So we are increasing year over year at a pretty, pretty fast pace. If we want to take a look at where we've come from, well, we are 59.5% from the previous peak. So today's peak versus 2006 peak. 59.5%. That peak was July 2006. The trough, which was February 2012, which was the best time to buy a property. If you did, you've pretty much made over 100% 100 of your uh, plus, almost 
uh, you know, uh, value added to where you purchase, which is kind of cool. But again, 59% growth from previous peak to today's peak. And again, today's peak is two months back. Let's take a look at the individual locations here, guys. Um, Atlanta, 25.7% increase. Boston, 14.5. Charlotte, 26. Chicago, 13. Cleveland, 14.7. Dallas, 30.7. Denver, 23.7. Uh, Detroit 15.4, Vegas 28.5, LA 23.2, Miami third position at 32%, Minneapolis 12.4, New York 13.7, Phoenix at number two at 32.4. I got to say, the Phoenix has led. I think I mean, well, they've, they've led, and I don't know how many months now they've been over 30%, you know, consecutively. Um, San, um, okay, Portland is 19.3, San Diego 29.6, San Fran 24.4. One, Seattle, 27.7. Tampa with the lead at 34.8 and Washington at 12.9. So those are your year-over-year -year percent changes on home values in those locations. So significant for basically what the lowest we have is 13% in Chicago. So everything's double digits and we're talking the 20s and then the 30s. High teens, 20s, 30s. So uh, Lord love it. I mean, it's, it's certainly uh, up there as, as, as high as it can be. Uh, again, how far or how long is this going to go? We'll start seeing some manifestation in the next little while. But I want to bring up this example. I do talk about it from time to time. This is a, a short sale that we closed on or my, my um, clients closed on end of the year last year. Uh, I followed up with them and it's just one of the things I've forgotten to do. They purchased it for $172.5, um, you know, about almost a 50% de decrease in the mortgage balance that was owed. Zillow had it in the middle at uh, $3.5, uh, $353,000. Well, guess what? They put it on, they rehabbed it, put it on the market. They listed it for $359,000 under contract in one day, sold for $420,000. Sold in April. So guess what? Well, that'll, that'll be reflected in the next month's case show. But the point, though, is that, you know, this is why things are happening. So if you can purchase a property at such a discounted rate, do a little bit of work to it and sell it on the retail market, you know, competitively. I mean, listen, one day, uh, one day on the market, uh, listed it for three sixty, almost goes to four twenty. I mean, come on, guys. Right? I mean, that's that's the beauty of this business. Buying, well, like they say in stocks, buy low, sell high. Same thing here. Doing the stuff that I do and know how to do. We're purchasing homes at discounts, which is debunking a lot of the. Um, you know, mainstream media narrative saying, you know, we can't get house at discounts and blah, blah, blah. Well, certain people can't solve their own problems because situations are in. We can solve the problems and basically everybody can win and something like this. So something to think about as you go forward. You can reach out to me if you want more information. Now, <clears throat> obviously, Case Shiller comes into play. We also have the new home sales. Well, new home sales, so, you know, home builders, you know, their sales have fallen sharply. Oh, look, a recession alarm has sounded. So I want to point out here, a lot of these headlines are going to be sort of, um, what's what I'm looking for? A bit salacious, but it's salacious for the other end. It's salacious for the housing bubble bros uh, for, for uh, you know, a little bit of time here. So I'm kind of happy about that. Finally getting some recognition. It's just the way things are going. So new home sales collapse in April. Now, you know, here's the deal. So uh, analysts expected new home sales to slide 1.8% uh, month over month in April. Well, they didn't. They collapsed a stunning 16.6% month over month. It's the worst drop since the peak of the COVID crisis and before the, uh, that, the taper tantrum of 2013. So basically, new home sales cratering. Um, what And apparently, there's lots of inventory out there now, new home sales. So what are new builders going to do? I'm sure they're capitulating and having some problems now. So this is the fourth straight month that we've seen new home sales declines. Longest streak since October 2010, which is right in the middle or sort of more, more, more on the middle part of the housing bubble or, or housing bubble bursting crisis. New home sales seasonally adjusted, um, boils down to 591K units for the year, the lowest since uh, April 2020. So we can see that everything's taken a bit of a dive here for a number of reasons. Well, guess what? Um, new home prices exploded higher with massive surge in the mean price relative to the mean prices, suggesting the mixed shift is increasing skewed to the higher end home selling, okay? That's a scoop here. So we realize that home, new home prices are up, interest rates are up, material prices have been up for quite some time. So all this is basically being reflected in the bottom line price to the home buyer, 
which people are going, I can't do it. I'm going to buy out of my contracts. I'm not going to buy. We're just going to wait. Um, I can't afford it anymore. I can't even get financing. I'm not approved. So things are, are starting to happen now uh, in the marketplace. And as I said, you don't have one thing that causes the problem. It's a number of things sort of running in succession or, or, or at the same time that'll sort of bring this market down here. Now, as we always said, you know, home ownership is dead. Uh, home ownership is becoming increasingly out of reach for many Americans. Rapid, um, you know, run up in mortgage rates. Um, but here's the thing, though. Uh, silver line uh, for some is the fact that the number of houses for sale in April rose 8.3% uh, to 444,000 and leaving the month's supply at 9 compared to 6.9 the prior month. This is new home sales, not existing home sales. So the new home builder supply is increasing. So <clears throat> we always say that a balanced market is typically, you know, six months worth of supply. That means there's a balance of buyers, sellers, things are going on here. So um, how that affects the new home sales, I mean, clearly builders don't want to have probably a greater than six months supply at any given time out there, probably a bit less. But now we're at a nine month supply. So we're going to start seeing stuff that's sitting around for a bit. Now, can the builders reduce price? Don't know. Right? Are they stuck in with their, their price points? Do they have flexibility? What can they offer new home buyers as far as incentives or, or deals? You know, what they always offer, right? Hey, use our mortgage company, our title company, we'll throw an upgrade and stuff like that. Who knows? But the point though is that suddenly we're going to see, we're seeing, and we'll see an increase in new home inventory. So, how do you get rid of inventory? Typically, you got to drop prices, right? To be competitive. That's, that would make sense. Now, as this comes as no surprise, all right? Um, University of Michigan does a lot of polls and surveys. So University of Michigan sentiment tumbles, accelerates in May, home buying confidence collapse. So essentially, um, we are the current conditions falling to a 13 year low with future expectations to drop even further in, in the future. So basically, uh, the lowest since August 2011, as far as home buyer confidence, which basically means the market's dismal. It's a number of things, inventory, price points, um, the stress of it all. You've also got interest rates, mortgage rates, obviously. So you can see that's the blue line and the blue line is tanking. All right. Simple as that. Now, to make matters even worse, <clears throat> and, and really this um, is a result of home buyer confidence being so low, is U.S. pending home sales plunged to the weakest since 2014 as unsold inventory spikes by record. So uh, we're not. This is this is now existing home sales. We're not even. We're not talking about the new homes. We just finished that. Uh, buyer sentiment dropping to lowest, and it looks like it's going to keep dropping for a bit. So of course, when as I said that, as a result, buyers aren't out looking at homes, aren't placing offers, can't afford it, etc. So uh, basically, the pending home sales is an index created by NAR, National Association of Realtors, and that basically is almost like an index of forward-looking potential closes down the road. So contracts that are signed in the month of April will reflect closings typically in June and July. So now, um, you know, this is where we're going to start to see the summer selling season pick up. So, you know, a 3.9% month over month decline was almost double of a 2.1% drop that was expected. So, you know, the analysts are already sort of, you know, I guess you could say expecting some drop here, but they're missing the mark by a little bit here. So things are worse than predicted. Uh, this is the sixth straight monthly decline in sales, the longest losing streak since 2018. So should not come as any surprise based on what is going on in the entire marketplace and home buyer sentiment that, you know, signed contracts are dropping. Uh, basically, it says your um, pending home sales are now down 11.5% year over year, the biggest year over year drop outside the great financial crisis, um, uh, you know, excluding COVID lockdowns and the homeowner tax credit anomalies in 2010. So pending contracts are telling as they better reflect the timely impact from higher mortgage rates than do closings. So right, the, uh, home prices in the meantime appear in no danger of any meaningful decline, said NARS chief economist Lauren Yun, Lawrence Yun. Now, okay, um, home prices are not going to decline. Well, you know, what's meaningful? I don't know here. So I look at it going, the, the more pending home sales slow, which results in the less closings that occur, which means people didn't sell their homes as they wanted to, which means they have to react to that, which means what? I need to drop price to make it more attractive or take it off the market. So that's where we are today. And again, we are still a little bit too early to see the effect uh, really 
from uh, what the what the mortgage rates have done until maybe next month and the month afterwards. Hey guys, if you're not a subscriber to my channel and you appreciate the information I provide, if you could do me that great favor and hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate that. And for those of you that are subscribers, could you do me a favor? Could you hit the subscribe button again because I always lose subscribers. Get that bell notification because I'm going to be back to putting more videos out now. We're at the inflection point in the, in the real estate market right now. Lots going on here. Stuff you want to learn and, and you want to listen to and you want to be part of will be on this channel as we continue to go forward. So thank you very much. Now, this is what I talked about with respect to, you know, we have the Great Depression, the Great Recession, and, and what? The Great Deceleration. We'll talk about that and get to it in a second. Um, but here, well, actually, it's right here now. There you go. So um, the cooling housing market enters into the Great Deceleration. So what we're seeing now is a, I guess you could say, like a real shift in um, opinion. Okay, when I mean opinion, I'm talking about people who are uh, writing articles, journalists, people who are analysts and economists out there, they're chiming in about the housing market. And six months ago, well, actually, maybe even a bit more, maybe, you know, seven, eight months ago, it was still like, hey, it's going to be a, uh, you know, bristly and, and, and busy 2022 ex expectations of double digit home price appreciation throughout the year, blah, 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 blah. You know, everything's going to keep going up. Well, you know, that, that was good for the first three months, maybe fourth month, but now we're going to start seeing things change. Why? Because of, again, uh, buyer fatigue, um, home buyer sentiments low, interest rates are up. It's always affecting buyers and how they're going to work in the marketplace. So we can see that, you know, all these sort of headlines, you know, housing market enters uncharted waters, inventories are in crisis mode, mortgage rates keep spiking, freaking out anxious housing market. Banks are offering bigger loans than ever to keep up with the housing crisis, okay? That's problematic, by the way, because if the banks keep raising their loan limits, and that gives you more to hang yourself, which means when there is a correction and issues happen, um, you'll be more exposed as, as a buyer. So there you go. Um, it's interesting, though, that, you know, uh, how can I put it? As, as I mentioned, you know, a year ago, seven months ago, we, we were not talking this, or very few of us were and again, we were the butt of the jokes and, and, you know, being pointed out on other YouTube channels and stuff and in the media, you know, calling us said the housing bubble bros and the fact that this doesn't exist and all the reasons why we're not going to have, you know, a housing crisis correction, whatever that is. Well, funny how tides have changed. All right. Now, do I want to rub people's faces? In it? No, I don't. I'm just saying, you know, this is where we're at right now. Keep an eye on these overvalued housing market as the housing boom implodes. OK, I didn't write that. Okay, that's a nice salacious headline, but I didn't write that. <laughs> that's other people who are chiming in now. So, the, as I said, the position is changing. The thought's changing as well, too. This one, housing market just slid into a full-blown correction, says top economist Mark Zandi. So, this guy, Mark Zandi, is a Moody's analyst chief economist. He's ready to call it. Okay, so basically what he's telling Fortune magazine here, this is where the article's from, is that um, we've officially moved from a housing boom into a housing correction. So basically, um, the market's softening. Um, the drop-off is not result of seasonality or a soft month or two. It's a trajectory flip. Uh, demand is pulling back fast in the face of mortgage rates that have spiked dramatically. I know the Fed's still saying they're going to be raising mortgage rates or, or the or the you know your your whatever mortgage interest rate component a few you know 50 basis points or that's going to be the next couple of times through so we don't see that slowing down for the next few months for sure at least into the fall so according to this guy here the moody's chief economist um the housing market has peaked everything points to a rolling over of the housing market in terms of home sales they're falling sharply housing demand is coming down fast home price growth will go flat here pretty quickly we'll see home price declines in a significant number of markets so that's the typically thing that happens we have the D, the great deceleration. So deceleration is the slowdown of the appreciation. So that's going to stop. We're going to flatten out. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the summer selling season plays out here with these higher interest rates and the lower and the, the crap buyer sentiment. Then once that's over, will sellers put their homes in the market? Will sellers try to cash out? Will the buyer mark will it shift from a sellers to a buyers market? Will we see price decreases, markets flattening? People reducing markets, markets losing where they were. It's inevitable. Real estate works in cycles. So this is just what's going on right now, today. Okay, um, what is not affecting um, the price points are any distressed property, um, any forbearances, foreclosure activity, delinquencies, whatever. I mean, that stuff is not even making an impact. It's not even here yet. It's getting here. It's kind of trickling its way in. So that's why when we talk about stuff like this. 
which I find is really interesting because this is just based on what's happening today, which doesn't include the full complement of distressed property. So my point is, wait till that stuff starts happening. So we're going to start seeing stuff change without the distressed. Then when the distress starts hitting on market, etc., then that's going to change even even more so, and we'll start to see some some big stuff happening. Now, as far as you and I are concerned, there's a lot of distress out there, and you should you don't have to wait to get your hands on it or to, or to f figure this stuff out. Start doing it now. Figure out how to do it. I can show you how. There's lots of information out there, lots of data out there, and you can start doing the deals like I'm showing you that all my clients are doing right now. So the people who are in the know are have a head start in this game. And we'll get there and be farther down the path when everything starts breaking free here. So you got to keep that in mind. But again, um, I just closed this deal on Friday. Okay, we got another short sale approval. This is a little bit out of the area here in Tampa. But the point, though, is we're, we received a pretty darn good discount with respect to the appraised value of what was owed in the property. So as I said, the stuff that we do here, it's not flying by the seat of our pants and throwing mud on the wall and seeing what sticks. When we engage in these deals, it's done in a very specific way to push price points down um, so that the opportunities are going to be there. And I can tell you that um, you know, we, the same buyer that did the other property just closed on this on, on Friday, and I think the upside is even better um, than the property that they sold for 420 Okay, so this they bought it for less. This one for less than that. So basically, is twenty two hundred, you know, three bedroom, you know, two bathroom, twenty two hundred square foot house on five acres. Pretty nice deal here. Um, you know, again, it's it's about the process. It's about getting to control these deals, helping the homeowner out in their time of need and distress, and then positioning the property for the great upside. Now, of course, this will be a project. There's going to be money shelled out to work on this, but you know, the the return and the margin is going to be pretty significant, which, which is great. So again, my point though is that I'm, I'd like to always point to the housing narrative and say, you know what? Yep, uh, all these people who haven't paid their mortgages uh, because they had difficulty for various reasons, uh, sad that it may be, uh, they're not all going to be able to sell their house and cash out and walk away and put money in their pockets. It just does not happen. It doesn't work that way. Some locations across the country, yeah, um, that's going to work. But when we take these broad brush strokes and we say, oh, this is going to be easy and just sell, everything's great, well, that doesn't work, okay? It doesn't work for the majority of people. Uh, there's reasons for that, and of course, I can tell you all about that if you reach out to me. But the point is that this is just the tip. This is not even the tip of the iceberg. This is just us sticking our toe in the water, not even near the iceberg, and we know what's coming. And uh, as I mentioned, you're know, talking to lawyers, uh, economists, lobbyists, whatever, we know that the lenders haven't even begun to do what they're going to be doing probably towards the end of the year and, and into the next two or three years. So simple as that, everybody. Um, this is what we have to look forward to. If you'd like to know how to uh, engage in the stressed housing market, send me an email. That's my email right there. Please give me your contact information, including your phone number, so I can contact you. Most of you that contact me forget to put your cell number in. That way I can text you and say, hey, Randy, here you got time to talk, all right? Because, again, I'm on East Coast time. A lot of people are calling from different parts of the country, so we got to fit all these calls in. So, anyway, that's the scoop. Um, again, sorry for the delay in putting videos up, but as I said, deals come before videos. That's how the, the market has to work when you're in the real estate business. Uh, once again, thank you for the views, likes, comments. Please share the video with your family and friends. Subscribe or not a subscriber. We look forward to speaking with you later on the week.